All good? Okay, we're working. Hi, it's Alex from Chemo Snacks, back for another Thursday Live. Okay, today I thought we would do a bit on metallic taste. Now we've done metallic taste as far as food goes before, but I'm going to be talking more generally about the preparation of food in the kitchen. I've done something similar before, but because I have so many new followers, which is thank you so much for trusting what I do, um, I thought I'd run through it again, because you might not have gone through the archives and discovered this before. Now, Thursday, we always do a weather update. What can I say? It's Melbourne. We've got four seasons in one day. It's either sunny and raining at the same time or blowing a gale and not raining. Don't know what's going on out there at the moment. Enough of the weather update. Oh, okay, as you can see, I have got a bunch of utensils in front of me and that's what the topic is today. The preparation of food when the metallic taste is involved. Now metallic taste is where all the food that someone is eating literally tastes like you're eating knife and fork. And it's a disgusting taste in the mouth and it can put, completely put people off their food. And some people say that they're so sensitive to it that even the uh, cooking utensils and things, something that the food was cooked in or a surface, all affects the way that the food tastes. So what we want to do is try and eliminate all of those extra metallic tastes within the food and we've got a greater success of the food being more palatable. Starting off, I think I'll start off with mixing bowls. Now a lot of us have plastic and glass mixing bowls already. Some of us though have these aluminium or little metal bowls. So in the case of metallic taste, you know, you probably, you want to do that away and go for either your plastic bowl, glass bowl, or even a ceramic bowl will be fine. Look, if you don't have any of these type of ones on hand, just, you know, make do with what you have. You might have just a, a big serving bowl or something like that. Use that as a mixing bowl. And you pop those over. Oh, what a rattle. Okay, now mixing up food within your mixing bowl, so many things that can happen here. We like the whisk ideas. I had it, oh there it is behind me, sorry, not very organised today. Some of us are still using the metal whisks and the metal whisks are great depending on what you're making. Sometimes they're just like fully required. However, if there's metallic taste involved, you probably want to ditch this one for a bit and go for... I have several, several different sizes. Go for one that's silicone coated. Um, these are available at most places and at the supermarket these days as well. You can see this one that I have, it has a metal, uh, metal. It has a wooden handle. And the reason for that is, as again, some people say when they have metallic taste, even that metal on their hands can make a big difference to them. You see this one's got a little metal handle here. So depending on what's going on with the metallic taste and the other side effects, you know, Choose something like this, but you know, if you've got silicon coating on the end, that's probably the, the best that you might be able to do, which is fine. Pop those back into there. Um, now, we, we had cracking mashed potatoes last night with our dinner, um, and this is our potato masher. However, not great, again, for metallic taste, it is all metal. I would be going for um, something that you can get the plastic ones, or if you have one of these little doodads, just a technical term there, doodads, this thing here that's attached to my stick blender, which I'm absolutely in love with, this does mashed potato, and it does the creamiest mashed potato I have ever had. And I've done mashed potatoes always in a moolie and all sorts. This is fantastic. Does them within, you know, two seconds flat. That's perfect. Now, so you've mixed up your stuff in your mixing bowl with your silicon, Whizzy word thingy, can't think of the name of it, whisk, whizzy word. And you want to get what's in the bowl out of the bowl. Again, be going for something, a um, you, utensil, a, <laughs> can't speak English today, a spatula, a silicon spatula. Honestly, it's been a long day. I was doing a lot of filming yesterday, the day before, and I think, you know, I've just lost my whole train of thought. There's also these little scrapers that you can get at the supermarket. They're really cheap and easy to get as well. Um, look, I've got a whole heap of them. They've got plastic handles too. And I love these ones. This is a little pastry brush. They've got these uh, silicon handles and rubber handles on them. 
I know when I was having my treatment, my hands were quite affected and um, you could get you know, really sore hands or just loose sensation in them. And it just made holding onto things a bit easier having this type of grip as well. That's a little aside. Now, tong wise, go for something again that's got the silicon grips and a plastic end or a silicon end. There's so many things that can be done. You know, you'd be swapping out this lifter for that type of lifter. Um, numerous sorts of spatulas and spoons and it, honestly you can't go past just good old wooden spoons. Now cooking things in something, I'm just going to move this away, to say you need to cook something on a tray, you can see this is new, I've been after one of these for ages, on a tray and this is an enamel coated tray or you might have something that's, that's like this, still metal but can still use these. I can't think of an alternative of not having these. What I would be doing is using probably a double layer of greaseproof paper and popping that on there just to try and form another barrier between the, the um, tray and the food. So that's that one. Now, this is a silicon cupcake holder. I've got so many of these sorts of things. They're great. I used to have the um, metal cupcake thingy but I use tend to use these more now you can get them in all sorts of shapes and sizes this one goodness knows is a really huge gingerbread man one I fail to know what I'm actually going to do with that one and you can get also like you know round cake molds square ones any shape you like you can tell that my favorite color is pink um or these these I think I've got these from yeah these from Kmart like most of my stuff um, the little silicon patty cases, they're really cool. And also you're not throwing out either, so good for the planet. Well, I don't know how they make silicon, I might take that back. Um, and another thing I picked up from Kmart, this was a whole set of bamboo and plastic utensils. And I think the whole set was about $10. It wasn't, certainly wasn't any more than that. And just really great, you know, you might need them just to get by in this case and it's you know it's got a bit of everything that you would use in there okay i think that covers just about everything there so as i said we were not going to talk about recipes today look there's plenty of recipes in jelly is not food and on the website um go and have a look at those if you're asked about after metallic taste recipe ideas but this is just an added just in case um metallic taste is really ramped up Okay, that's it from me today. Sorry, I think like I'm power talking today and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.